Hey guys, it's Di, and I have a fun tag video for you guys today. You guys know I love doing tag videos, and this was a really fun one because it's something that we're right in the midst of right now. And this is the Build Your Own Dream Home tag. And this was actually started by the mom of six boys, Cheryl, and she tagged me to do this one, and I thought that this was a super fun tag because I love home shopping. I don't know. I'm just one of those people. I love like inventing my perfect dream home and just I love going to look at houses and things like that. It's just a really fun process. Now the process that we're in right now, like re actually renovating the house, meh, not so fun, but it is a fun to see like your idea in your head come to life. So I really enjoy um, just things to do with the house and things like that. So I thought this would be a fun one for me. And to sum up this entire tag, I'm going to go through and answer all the questions. There's about 20 of them. But to sum it up, my dream house, honestly, I was just thinking about this when we were watching things around the holidays, would be the house in Home Alone where the family lives in Home Alone. It's just a with an attached garage. <laughs> we'll put that disclaimer on there. I love that house. That house is gorgeous. It's, it's an actual house in the Chicagoland area, a multi-million dollar house, so I don't think that I will ever obviously live in that specific house. It was just on the market a few years ago. And I want to say it was like $8 million or something like that. So um, property in this area is fairly expensive, um, but luckily it's a little bit not that expensive where I live, particularly live. But anyhow, um, I don't think I'll be having an $8 million house anytime soon, but I love that house at Home Alone. Just gorgeous. I love the banisters in it, just the layout. A traditional kind of home decor is definitely what I like. So I would say I'm traditional or transitional in the type of home decor. So let me go ahead and answer the questions in the build your own dream home tag. And I was told I could be as outlandish as I wanted, but I'm going to try to be realistic uh, as far as like things that I would actually, you know, maybe see myself purchasing down the line. I foresee us being in this particular house that we just bought for a little while, um, but down the line, if we ever upsize or anything uh, out of this one, then this these answers will be what we'll be looking for, I guess. Um, so anyhow, build your own dream home tag. Number one, acreage or city lot? And I have to say for this one, our answer would be acreage. We just literally moved from a more closer suburban, very small or smaller plots of land, like maybe half an acre or something where uh, the house that we were living at and we just moved into a neighborhood that's a little bit set further out. Uh, usually these houses are anywhere from an acre to five acres of land and just it's so nice. It really is nice for my own personal taste just to not have your house so close to the other houses around you. I love being in a neighborhood in a subdivision um, but it's so nice to just have that space in the yard to go outside and play. I just love it. So definitely acreage for that one. It's something we just checked off. Number two is basement or crawl space and we absolutely have to have a basement. We're not right in Tornado Alley but we do get tornadoes around here and there have been some pretty big ones recently. Um, so definitely have to have a basement and then also I have to have it for storage. It's just what I have to have for storage. So this, the third one is attached or detached garage. Absolutely have to have an attached garage. We have had this for years and my husband has to have it for all his, of his activities and if you guys have kept up with our move, we actually moved out of a house that had a three car garage into a house that has a f basically five car garage, five parking spaces. So we keep upsizing the garage for my husband's needs. It has to be attached um, for sure. And then number four is wood or vinyl siding. Absolutely vinyl siding. Again, that's something that was a must for this house when we were looking at new houses again. Uh, we have had wood siding in the past. And while it's a certain kind of look, it is a pain to keep it up. It is just not fun at all. Uh, so definitely don't ever want to have a house again that has wood siding. And the past few houses we lived in have been vinyl siding. It's really, really nice. Number five is brick or stone accents. And I have to say I'm definitely a brick person. Just like I mentioned at the beginning, the home alone house type thing. I really love that traditional look. And brick is kind of one of those very traditional type of things. I especially love like the darker red or like a mid-tone red brick. Uh, just a very traditional look. And I love that type of house. Uh, for number six, one, two, or three-story house. I would say I definitely at least a two-story house. We have owned one-story houses. We have owned two-story houses. houses. 
start to be a little bit cumbersome just as far as like keeping it up and that sort of thing. Um, I'd say there's really no difference in living in a two-story versus a three-story um, as far as how it feels in my personal opinion. Um, so I'd say at least a two-story, three-story if that's the way that the layout was. And then number seven is hardwood floor, tile, or carpet on the main floors. So this is something we've really been struggling with at this house. So if you can see it behind me, we just put down like this, uh, this is a, like a laminate wood in here. And then we have hardwood in some of the other rooms, like actual hardwood. And then we have tile and the kitchens and the bathrooms. And we are replacing the flooring in the dining room and the living room. Well, the dining room is a no-brainer. It needs to be like this wood type of flooring so it's easier to clean, food spills and that sort of thing. But I'm really struggling with what to put down in the living room because I personally, this has got to be the traditional thing again, I really love carpet. I love carpet. In the end, I think we're going to go ahead and just put like the wood flooring down throughout the dining room and the living room. It's more modern. You can put down an area rug, etc. Um, but I do really like carpet. However, right now the more modern thing to do is to put down this like, you know, hardwood looking wood stuff. So that's what we're doing right now. Um, number eight is how many bedrooms. Now this is the dream home tag. So I would say for sure we we have to live, we have to have four. I'd say four is our limit that we have to have. But as far as dream home, I would say six. My dream home would have six bedrooms. I think that that would be the optimal amount of bedrooms with um, the, the amount of kids that we had right now or possibly one more. I don't ever foresee us having more than three kids, but if we had more than three kids, the number of bedrooms I would want would go up by one from six. So if that makes sense whatsoever, um, six bedrooms would be my absolute like dream home would have it, but four is definitely a functional number of bedrooms for us, uh, especially at this point in time with just two kids. So number nine is how many bathrooms, and again, dream home wise would be six. Now, if I have to clean them all and <laughs> there's only like, you know, as many people in my family as there are right now, um, three is fine. Um, I'd say like one aspect of like my dream home that I've seen in some other homes is if the girls had their own bathrooms attached to their bedrooms, like literally like an ensuite bathroom for those bedrooms as well. I mean, that would be like absolute dream home if the girls each had their own bathrooms as well. That's a very rare thing. A, another YouTuber that I saw, her dad was actually a contractor and he built houses and he built their house for the kids to actually have their own bathrooms as well. I thought that was really, really cool, but I think that's a pretty rare thing for the other bedrooms in addition to the master bedroom having an ensuite. Which brings me to the next question, number 10, a walk-in closet or ensuite? If I have to choose between those, I have to have an ensuite for the master bath. Just, it has to happen. I need my own bathroom space. We did live in a house at one point when we were in Michigan that had a bathroom that was ensuite to the master, but had access off the hallway for like anyone to come in. I did not like that. I did not like that at all. So I want an ensuite that's totally closed off to the master bedroom. Um, definitely a for sure on that one. Number 11, jacuzzi tub or separate shower. Now the last house that we had, we had both actually. We had a jacuzzi tub and a separate shower. It's a very nice setup. There was a lot of wasted space in that bathroom. If you go back and look at my um, like bathroom organization or whatever, there's so much wasted space in that bathroom. Here we have the opposite problem. Our bathrooms are very very small they're a very traditional sized bathroom and while we could put like a little like regular sized jacuzzi tub in you're not putting one of those big garden tubs in and um, having both that and a separate shower is not possible in this house so I'd say in my dream house both but if I had to choose a separate shower because I've had both and we use the shower every day the jacuzzi tub I maybe use like a couple times a month maybe so it wasn't really that useful um, number 12, gas or electric stove. I've officially been converted to a gas stove person. I just like them better. It's a more even cooking and I just really like it. And I love the stove that we bought for this house. It's got the fifth griddle in the middle and I just I absolutely love it. So our appliances here, I am loving them all. I will do a separate review for you guys. Um, just can't say enough. I absolutely love the appliances that we chose for this house. 
Um, 13, cherry oak or white kitchen cupboards. I personally like a more traditional look of like the cherry cupboards in the kitchen. It's just kind of what I gravitate towards and I really like like a cherry cabinet or darker wood cabinet with a more tannish granite countertop. And for this house, we have the oak cabinets, and I don't anticipate changing that at all, just because cabinets are really the most expensive thing to change out in the kitchen. It's what pushes kitchen renovations to like ten, fifteen thousand dollars depending on what cabinets you choose. Um, and granite, you can change out pretty easily for a few thousand dollars depending on your square footage of the countertops you're replacing. Um, so I don't foresee me changing the cabinets of this, but if I was looking at other houses or could pick for my dream house, I would probably pick a darker cabinet or like a cherry wood cabinet for sure. Number 14, cozy eating nook or large dining room. And I love large formal dining rooms. Absolutely love them. In fact, if I had my dream house with six bedrooms and six baths, I would probably have a crazy over the top, super formal dining room and just try to make it as elaborate and elegant as possible. I do really try to scale it down in my regular life and have a dining room that's usable um, and functional and pretty all at the same time. Um, but if I had my dream house, I would love a large formal dining room rooms absolutely love it um, for number 15 office or guest room and if I had the six bedroom dream house I would have both they would have an office and a guest bedroom um, but for this one I'd say if you have to choose one or the other I would choose a functional room that could double as a space for guest bedrooms so for instance like what I've done with my dressing room upstairs I have like my vanity and all the things that I'm using every single day that are functional items for myself but then I've also ordered a chair that folds out into a bed or pulls out into a bed has like a sleep a hideaway sleep bed in there and so then it doubles as like a guest sleeping space and we also have pull out couches and things like that all around our house so um, I really like that kind of double function of a guest sleeping space and then also can use the space as something else so if you have to choose I would choose a functional re room that could be used for something else also that has guest sleeping space in it as well uh, number 16 is bright modern colors or neutral hues and I think you can probably tell by looking at the walls behind me that I go for more of a neutral tone. I love like taupes, grays, beiges. Um, that's just what I gravitate towards and I always have. I don't foresee that changing. Uh, number 17, curtains or blinds. I love curtains. I love the aspect of curtains, how they can change the feeling of the room, make it more formal, make it more casual. You can get a pattern on them, a solid color. I've really started playing with them a lot more within the past few years also it can get a little bit pricey when you have to buy a number of panels but I do really like the different aesthetics that they can bring to a room so I'm not a huge fan of blinds I understand the functionality behind them but just not a huge fan number 18 home gym or kids playroom <laughs> and I think it's pretty clear which one we uh, choose on that one so I think we'll go ahead and leave it at that that was one of the big reasons we chose this house so kids playroom. <laughs> we gotta have somewhere to stick all our stuff. Number 19, swimming pool, hot tub, or swing set. For the stage in life that I'm at right now, definitely a swing set is the most realistic one and we're actually planning on getting like a, a larger wood one for, you know, that they can grow into um, probably this upcoming year. I love swimming pools and I would have one at my dream home, but I don't think that I ever want to own one in my real life. They make me so nervous with kids. They really honestly, I would be a nervous wreck if we had a swimming pool. This house actually used to have a swimming pool and it's been taken out. Uh, and I don't know that I could ever own a house with young children in a swimming pool just because it makes me so nervous. Um, the hot tub wouldn't probably make me quite as nervous because you could cover it up a little bit easier. Uh, but swimming pools, just it's just such a huge risk. I love them. I would absolutely love to have one for myself. But just even talking about it makes me nervous. Anyways, number 20, flower garden or vegetable garden? Probably flower garden on this one. I am not the biggest green thumb. I kill pretty much everything that I try to grow. I would really love to have a really nice flower garden. I'm going to try my hand at it this year at this house. Um, I've never really been that good at keeping everything alive though, so I don't really have high hopes for it, but I'm going to give it a go and just see what I can do. So those are the questions for the dream home tag. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And if you haven't seen this one yet, if you haven't done it, I take you to do this one. Thanks so much to Cheryl, the mom of six boys, for starting this tag. I think it's a really fun one, and I love hearing like different home preferences and 
and just looking at different house things. This is something I've always enjoyed and enjoy doing for our own house. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.